politics. Why haven't you become more politically oriented? Well, number one, because I don't want people to think that what I'm dealing with is political in the sense that it's Republican or Democratic or Socialist in its nature. What I'm really about is what I call positive self-motivation and positive self-image psychology. Getting a person to believe in the divinity within himself, in the possibilities within himself. Getting a person to accept his own self-responsibility. Why haven't you become involved in politics? Well, I mean, you, got, you have a tremendous command of, of, uh, and charisma and why it, it, that, that seems to work part and parcel with, with politics. True. But then again, I like to be my own man. I don't like to have to cater uh, to things that I don't believe in to please a constituency. As you know, I'm quite controversial, and I don't, it doesn't matter to me at all who agrees or disagrees with me uh, because I'm my own man. And being in the ministry, I can be my own man, and I can say what I wish to say and have no fear of whether people are going to support me uh, whether people are going to re-elect me. Wouldn't it also stand to reason that if indeed you did become involved in politics that, that reporters like myself or others would be delving off into your background and perhaps uncover something askew? Well, there would be no more delving than there has been already. People are always wanting to know, for, for example, about your first question was, how much are you worth? <laughs> But, of course, you know, it's interesting. Uh, people have questions about ministers like myself concerning the way they handle money and so on. But in my position, uh, we have to handle our affairs in a correct manner because the IRS is always watching. Is there anything in your past that you've hidden? No. Nope. Your life's an open book. An open book. You know, some people say, well, the Lord saved me from a miserable life of sin. You know, they said, they, I used to drink, I used to take drugs and so on. I never did any of that. Uh, getting, drinking myself out of my mind, or shooting needles in my veins, smoking pot, sniffing glue, none of that ever appealed to me. What the Lord saved me from was a miserable life of poverty. What about the politically using your influence to establish a, a black economic base in this country? All right, I do that in a way. At our church school in New York, which is the Science of Living Institute, we have mm -hmm. a business of living department. And what we do in that business of living department is teach people to identify their talents. We teach them to identify what businesses they're interested in. And we bring them together with the education and the expertise necessary to take their talents and their interests and get into business. And we have common, ordinary people that are always going into their businesses because of this. Uh, for example, a young man came to our church about two years ago, 25 years of age. He said, uh, I'm miserable, and if I don't find the answer here, I'm going to kill myself. He worked at a car wash, just as a, a day worker at a car wash. We counseled with him. A short time, his boss said, look, I'm going to leave this business, and I'd like for you to have it. And he came to us, and we were able to put him together with the financing and with the business expertise so that he took over the car wash. And it's no small matter because this car wash is, up, is uh, situated on Automobile Row in the Bronx, New York. And all of the prep work from all of the dealers is Something. done at this car wash. I must ask you, ask you in, in what time we have left, I think a couple of minutes, about South Africa and your views on what's going on in South Africa. Well, what's going on there is what goes on in the hearts of men everywhere. The desire for freedom. And that desire for freedom is so strong that it will brave guns and bombs and all of the opposition that can be mustered against it. There's going, there is some rough stuff now, and there's going to be some more rough stuff. But that desire for freedom that burns in the hearts of all men and of the black South Africans will emerge because man wants to be free. God has given man this desire, and this desire is not going to be put down, defeated. Is there anything you could do to help expedite this freedom? Yes, there is something that I can do, and in my quiet way, I support many of the various good causes. Jesse Jackson, Minister Louis Farrakhan, yourself, probably three no more controversial figures in America. What do you think of these two men in 30 seconds? Well, each one of us, in our own particular way, do what we believe we need to do to help the common good. I believe in approaching it 
with respect and love for all men of all races without speaking anything dishonorable or discrediting against any particular race or religion.